I'd like to explain to you very simply my gripe, what, what the problem I have with the regressive left. And it can be it can be explained very simply. Now, I know there's a lot of issues. There's street violence. There's, you know, the obvious authoritarian behavior. But it's also the complete inefficiency in their plan. One of the things that bothers me the most, I'm a very analytical, you know, technical person. I grew up building computers. I'm an internet person. I used to program video games back in the day. I'm not, I've been out of that for years. I made little crappy platformers. And, uh, but, but I'm very, you know, I was very active in like the hacker community when I was a kid, at least in my own little community. So to me, efficiency is paramount. If you have a plan, do it right. I can't stand watching people do things wrong. Look at the story. Activists want a problematic mural of George Washington destroyed. It will cost the high school $600,000. The artist wanted students to learn about Washington's flaws. How traumatizing. Let me tell you why they're so inefficient. Let me tell you what bothers me about them. Now, of course, again, I'll stress. First and foremost, it's the violence and authoritarianism. Sure, sure, sure. But here's the thing. You're upset over this painting about George Washington. Was George, you know, because George Washington had slaves, as did many people back then. The point of the painting is to show that so that people don't forget our founding fathers had flaws, bad ones. And as a country, we know why that was wrong. We have made great strides in the past 200 years to expand civil liberties to many more people, many more classes. And we're not done. Excuse me. We're not perfect. But here's what the activists do. They say, destroy the mural because it's problematic. In effect, what would they do? Whitewash history and erase the past erase our understanding of what the flaws were in the first place. Isn't that insane? Look what happened after the Vox apocalypse. Who got banned? Well, I'll tell you. It was journalists like Ford Fisher. It was historians, historical archives in the Netherlands. They don't care, right? Look, I don't think it's a grand conspiracy that a lot of these activists are like, I want to destroy the archives. (laughs) And this is their plan. No, it's that they're saying that's bigoted and mean spirit. You got to, you got to take it down. That painting is problematic. And you're like, dude, the painting is there as a reminder of the bad things. Okay. George Washington was a rad dude, right? The founding fathers were really smart people. The bricks, the foundation they laid for this country resulted in one of the freest and most respectful nations on the planet. It's not the, I'm not going to call it the best in terms of like respecting group, marginalized groups because people can argue about your opinion over who's better. But America certainly is near the top. I think America's on, uh, I, I would put America on top in a lot of ways, but sure, there's arguments for other countries, you know, chill, hippie, tiny ones. Um, maybe the Scandinavian countries, but they got, they got problems coming from their, you know, America's done a great job. Our laws have evolved. Our constitution has been amended and we've done great things. And this is a reminder that those great things came from a dark past. Or I shouldn't call it a dark past necessarily, but there were dark things in that past. And we shouldn't forget that because that, that allows us to know today, the bad things you see around you that you fight to change, they'll change progress is possible and we can make the world a better place. That's what I see from this. I say, wow, of all the good things we heard about Washington with his face on our money, the, 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 the first president of this nation, he had bad things. He had flaws. And you know, that means even with those flaws, good can come. Change can happen. Let's read about this story a little bit. A high school in San Francisco is considering three options for censoring a mural of George Washington deemed problematic by the local activist community. Putting up a current price tag, 300,000, painting over it, 600,000, or hiding it behind panels, 875,000. How can it cost that much money? Come on, go go to Home Depot and buy some slats for 20 bucks and just nail them to the wall. Come on. (laughs) I'm kidding. Don't do any of that. Leave the painting. No doubt San Francisco United School District could hire quite a few teachers in lieu of executing even the cheapest of those plans. But a 13 member working group asserts the mural must go. It glorifies slavery, genocide, colonization, manifest destiny, white supremacy, oppression, and doesn't represent SFUSD values of social justice, diversity, united, unity, I don't know what that means, student-centered. It also, it's also responsible for traumatizing students, according to the activists. Traumatizing students. A painting. Seriously. The truth is that George Washington's high school mural is, is provocative by design. It was painted in 1936 by a Russian-American artist named Viktor Arnatov, who held leftist sympathies. Arnatov did not wish to blindly celebrate Washington while ignoring the less savory aspects of of American founding. And thus he depicted the first president working his slaves and sending men to confiscate Native American lands. It was an attempt to remind students that history is a lot messier than what they read in class. And therein lies the problem. 
They don't seem to realize that they eat themselves. This was a leftist who said, I want to make sure everybody knows these things. And you know what? I agree with that. I do. As I, as I outlined earlier, it is important to remember our past is not perfect. In fact, we must strive every day to defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We've done a damn good job of it. And that's why I've got in my van an American flag pillow, to which a lot of people, you know, I got comments on Instagram like, Tim, why do you have American flags in your van? Because I respect and appreciate what America is and has done while still being critical of the bad things it's done in the past. You know, because as I stated, America, even to this day, has done bad things. But when we look back at that picture of George Washington, we realize those bad things today we're critical of, right? Bombing, you know, young men in foreign countries with drones. We're not at war with them, for one. Those will go away. We can become better. And we have. And that's why that mural is important. And it's also important because regardless of what it says, it's a piece of our history. And we should never forget our past, lest we, are, uh, lest we be deemed to repeat it. Let's read on. He put those ghastly gray pioneers literally walking over the dead body of an Indian to demonstrate that the settlement of the West was an act of conquest that involved the slaughter of Native Americans. Robert Cherney, a San Francisco State University professor, told the, schools, the school district's Board of Education in 2018. That was a very bold effort on his part to counter the kinds of textbooks that students were seeing, where they would whitewash history and say it was all great, skittles and rainbows, everything was wonderful, we came here, put a stake in the ground, and then poof, America appeared. No. There was war, there was conquest, turmoil, but there was trade, there was development, there was hope, faith, religion, there was bad and good. And we should always remember, you know, every aspect of our history. Modern activist culture, however, is preoccupied with an ever-expanding definition of safety, which now includes emotional safety. To walk past a mural that depicts violence against Native Americans and people of color, even if that's what actually happened, is considered trauma-inducing. And the purpose of education is to mitigate discomfort. They say this is, a, uh, he, this is from Robbie Sov, so he mentions the, the theme of his book, Panic Attack, Young Radicals in the Age of Trump. Why do we have to explain the pain caused by the visual offense that we see in the building that is supposed to be an institution of learning? Asked one woman at the public meeting about the issue on Tuesday. It's not in a museum, it's inside a school, lamented another speaker, who apparently did not understand the point of a school. Our students, all of them, deserve better. And this is better. This is good. It's a great mural. Other speakers, several of them Native American, expressed no objection to the mural, correctly pointing out that it was depicting what actually happened. And imagine this. If you were a Native American, you can look at that painting, you say, you see what they did to my people. And people will say, I do see that. I do. And I respect why you're angry. And I'm glad we can all be reminded that the depiction of someone walking over a dead body is not a positive depiction of that person. We can absolutely recognize the good things that George Washington and the Founding Fathers did while showing people they did bad things too. It was different times and we've changed, we've changed history. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't mean like, you've literally the activists trying to change history, but I mean like we've changed the course of history. We've made things better. According to National Review's James Sutton, most of the students want to keep the mural or don't really care one way or another. The controversy is the work of outside busybodies. Naturally, it looks like they're going to get their way. The school board is currently deciding between three different plans, all of which involve destroying the mur mural or covering it up. A final decision is expected next week, reports the College Fix. They go on to, uh, he goes on to say, by the way, if you're wondering why it would cost several hundred thousand dollars to get rid of the mural, here's your answer. Officials are required to conduct environmental impact reports before they take any action. Of course, this is reason, so you'll certainly hear the libertarian argument, but I think it's sad. I, I think it's really, really sad that we've come to a point where, one, as I mentioned earlier, activists have become so damn inefficient, they're, they're attacking past activists. Like, think about the work this guy did to make sure people never forgot the atrocities of the past, and the activists are actually destroying good left-wing activism. They're, it's it's completely inefficient, and it's why we see the circular circular firing squads of the left. You know, it's really funny. Uh, I did a video where um, we showed these graphs where there was uh, ethnic political groups, and white liberals were the only group polled that have an outgroup bias, meaning they hate themselves. So it's really fascinating then, because that's why you see the left constantly talk about white privilege. These white progressives talk about white privilege, but it's also why you see this. It's also why you see them eating themselves, because they don't like each other. They have an out-group bias. 
So when a white leftist activist says something, another white leftist activist says, no, you're wrong. I don't like you. I like them. And then they fight each other. And then something as simple as recorded history, a depiction of the things in the past becomes offensive. And I think this is, this is really uh, dangerous for, for other reasons too. Whether or not it's inefficient and they're just, you know, spinning their circle, you know, spinning in circles and attacking each other, they're also erasing history, the good and the bad. And as the saying goes, those that forget the past are doomed to repeat it. Some people argue, and I'm saying some people because not a lot, they're doing it on purpose because by erasing the past, they can then commit the same atrocities and get away with it. So think, think about it. This, this outgroup bias they have where they don't like white people. What do you think happens then when you erase the atrocities of the past? When you see George Washington stepping over a body, you get rid of all of those things. Get rid of the bad history. Delete the archives. Delete the journalists. Don't let anyone know what happened. Then they can do it and no one can, no, no one will be there to remember what really happened. That's what's scary. They'll start enacting policies from the most repressive regimes of history and people will say, oh, I don't know. When was this ever done before? I don't remember. But if you walk past this mural every day, and then someone says, we want to impose identitarian law, left or right, white or non-white, you'll say, no way, dude. I saw what happened when that was last implemented. I see it every day on that painting. And that's one of the reasons I think some of these people do want to get rid of this stuff. I will stress, it's really weird how after Carl's Maz's Vox Adpocalypse, what got purged? History. Anyway, I'll leave it there. There you have it. It sounds like the mural's going away, and that's sad. Thanks for hanging out. Stick around. I will see you all tomorrow at 10 a.m. on this channel. Um, uh, for the podcast, it'll be 6.30 p.m., 10 a.m., youtube.com slash timcastnews.